Okay, so this is uh, chapter one on perception. So, um, first off, why study perception? Uh, first of all, um, there's a lot of great possible careers that you could have uh, studying uh, that are related to the study of, of uh, sensation and perception. Um, first of all is the uh, obviously the research career, right? You could obviously do research in uh, um, uh, go to graduate school in the in a psychology department and do basic research in the study of sensation and perception. Uh, that's not a bad area to go into uh, because the study of sensation and perception is becoming more and more relevant in more and more fields. Uh, for example, in the, in the medical field, uh, there are the technology has gotten to the point now where we can start helping people uh, uh, who have problems hearing, for example, or, or people who are, have uh, severe visual impairments there are new technologies that are coming out now that can help these that can help blind people see and that can help uh, deaf people hear um, also um, understanding how you perceive the world is extremely important I mean all of our perceptions all of our knowledge uh, all of our behaviors start with sensation and perception uh, for example language processing Obviously, there's a lot of uh, uh, perceptual um, information involved in, in uh, processing language. Uh, we watch what people's mouths do, we watch body language, and we also listen and we hear all of the different sounds that are produced when we are uh, interpreting language. Uh, understanding color vision understanding depth perception. These are areas of research that are becoming more and more important nowadays, especially because we have machines now that can see, that can think, that can understand language. Um, if you go to the next slide, slide three in the slide deck, um, this is from figure 1-1 in your book. And this uh, slide actually contains um, pretty much every topic we're going to talk about in this course. Um, numbered one through seven. Um, starting with number one, number one is a stimulus, right? It's something, something that's in the outside world. Um, in this example we have a an image or a tree we're looking at uh, in the outside world. Um, the light comes from a light bulb or from the sun and bounces off this tree and it gets reflected and it gets um, focused into our eyeballs passes into our eyes and ultimately ends up being focused uh, into the back of our eyes uh, in, in, in our retina focused on the back of our eye in our retina once it's there, um, once that image is focused on the retina, uh, there, are there are receptors in the retina uh, that convert the light, uh, the photons of light into neural signals. Uh, those neural signals set off a very complex chain of neural events that ultimately lead to us perceiving something. In other words, us being able to detect that something's there. That's what perception is. Uh, once we perceive something, um, our minds, our brains take over so that we can recognize it, figure out what it is, uh, give it a name. And then finally, uh, we're able to act on these things, right? Um, action also affects our recognition. So as we act on something, uh, or, a or we as we behave, as we... Um, navigate through the environment um, that changes things right so as we walk through an environment things move around that ch changes as we move things in our environment that changes things and that alters our perceptions uh, so you have this constant uh, chain this relationship between our actions our recognition and our perception uh, constantly flowing 
right? As we do something, it changes uh, how things look, and uh, that changes our perceptions, which changes what we see, what changes what we recognize, and uh, on and on and on. Uh, slide four, uh, label stimuli steps one and two, right? So um, that's where we're talking really about what it is that we're perceiving, right? So everything that we're perceiving is described as a stimulus, right? A stimulus is anything, any object or any uh, entity that's in the environment that we can observe. And a stimulus can be a, uh, a sight, a sound, a smell, a taste, a, feel, a, a sensation on your skin. It could, as long as something that we can perceive in the environment. Um, one of the really important things you need to understand about our perceptions of stimuli is that um, we can only selectively attend to things uh, one at a time, right? So even if, sitting where you're at right now, right, sitting in your, uh, you know, in your office or at, or at home or wherever you happen to be at the moment, you have a whole bunch of things surrounding you, right? You have furniture and smells and sounds and all kinds of things surrounding you. But you can really only focus on one at a time, right? So right now you're focused on the video of me right now. You're listening to this and you won't, you're, you're not focused, say, on, you know, the feeling of the chair on your ass, right? You're not feeling that, right, until I mention it, then you, like, focus, and you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, I'm feeling this chair on my butt. <laughs> but um, we really only have the ability to focus on one thing at a time, uh, switching from one thing at a, one thing to at a time. Um, the, a stimulus, no matter what it is, impinges on the receptors in our body. And we have specialized receptors for detecting different types of energy in our environment. So we have photoreceptors, photopigments in, our, in the back of our eye that detect light. Uh, we have hair, uh, hair cells in our ears that detect vibrations in the air so we can hear sound. Uh, we have chemical receptors in our noses and on our tongues to detect smell and taste uh, respectively. And we have a number of different types of receptor, receptors in our skin to detect different types of uh, touch and different uh, sensations like heat and cold. Um, all of these different receptors um, res uh, are, are sensitive to different types of energy in the, in, the, in, the, in the environment produced from different stimuli. Okay. Slide five. All right, let's go to slide five. Um, slide five is a close-up view of the relationship between the environmental stimulus and what's going on with light in this example, right? And the take-home message here is that there's a step in between the environmental stimulus in the outside world and all of the receptors, uh, all of the... Um, uh, receptors firing, right? And that um, basically what's happening here is that the light reflects off a of stimulus. In this case, we're talking about lights. We're talking about perceiving light with our eyeballs. Uh, so the light reflects off the of stimulus, right? Uh, and it gets transformed, right? It passes through into your eye, so it passes through the cornea and then through the lens, and it gets focused by the lens onto the retina. And at that point on the retina is where the light gets transformed. Uh, from photons that stimulate um, fo uh, special pigments in your in, in your retina to neural signals. Okay, there's a transformation that occurs there, uh, going from light energy to neural signals. Right, and it's that it's those neural signals that become the signal that goes into our brains that ultimately allows us to perceive something. This principle is specified on the next slide, slide six, the principle of transformation. Uh, and this, the principle of transforma transformation says that when stimuli and responses created by stimuli are transformed or changed between the environmental stimuli and perception. So in between the environmental stimulus and the time you perceive something, we have this process where that energy from the outside world whether it's light or vibration or heat or whatever, that energy from the outside world hits some receptor in your body and at that point 
um, at that point, when it hits that receptor on your body, um, it gets transformed into uh, transformed or changed into a neural signal. Okay, that process is extremely important. If that doesn't happen, you can't perceive anything, right? If you don't have a receptor built wired into you that can transform one type of energy into another type of energy, then there's no that you'll never be able to perceive it, right? So there's a lot of energies out there that we don't perceive because we don't have receptors for it. Uh, for example, uh, we can't perceive uh, ultraviolet light. Right? We, there's a certain way, there are certain uh, a range of wavelengths of light that we can see that are visible to humans. But one of those wavelengths is not of ultraviolet. Our eyes cannot see ultraviolet. We don't have any receptors in our bodies that can perceive ultraviolet light. Uh, there are lots of critters in the world that do, like bee, honeybees, for example. Honeybees can see ultraviolet light. That's how they find flowers to pollinate, uh, because they have receptors for ultraviolet light, but we don't. Right. Um, the process, uh, and this is a process a whole chain of events that occurs to convert uh, a stimulus into a perception, right? This whole process. Um, so there are, again, the, this process involves sensory receptors. These sensory receptors are specialized to respond to different types of energy, some type of energy out there in the environment. So again, you have receptors in your eyes, in the back of your eyes, uh, on your retina that are sensitive to light. They respond to light. They fire off a signal when they get hit by light. Uh, you have receptors in your skin that fire off signals when they feel pressure or when they feel tugging or when they feel hot or, or cold. Uh, you have receptors in your ears that respond to vibrations uh, produced that, that are picked up from the air. Uh, and you have receptors in your tongue and your nose that respond to different chemicals so that we can smell and see. Uh, in the case of vision, we always talk about vision when we're talking about people because humans are vi visual animals, right? We, we are, our primary sense is vision, so in, in this course we're going to be talking a lot about vision because the bulk of research in sensation and perception over the last hundred years has been with vision because that's, that's what we do, right? Um, so in the case of eyes, uh, there are visual pigments, which are very large proteins, very large protein molecules that live in our retina that react to light. So essentially these protein molecules, whenever they get hit by a photon of light, it knocks some electrons out of orbit. These photons knock electrons out of orbit, causes these proteins to change shape. And that's the beginning of the cascade of events that leads to a uh, uh, a neural signal, okay? And that process, the word for that process of changing uh, external energy into um, a neural signal is called transduction, okay? So everything that we talk about in this course, a lot, uh, or every type of energy that we talk about in this course is going to have a process of transduction associated with it, okay? so. We're going to talk about the transduction of light, the transduction of sound, uh, of uh, air vibrations, sounds. We're going to talk about the transduction of chemicals and the transduction of physical touch, of uh, physical energy that hits our skin. That's going to be a huge uh, thing that we talk about in this class. Um, so in slide eight, right, we have specifically the receptor processes that are involved in. Um, converting light into neural signals. That process is, uh, takes place inside of one of two classes of uh, neurons that live in the back of your eye and your retina, rods and cones, which we're going to get into a lot uh, in chapter two. But as you can see on slide eight here, which is a reproduction of figure 1-3 uh, uh, on your, in your textbook, um, each one of these uh, um, 
neurons. They're very highly specialized neurons. Each one of these neurons is specialized to detect the presence of light photons. And whenever they detect the presence of light photons within the the frequencies that they, that, that they are specialized for, uh, they will react. They will uh, uh, fire a signal uh, that ultimately ends up uh, uh, into a perception.